Uh, Treasurer, the Courier Mail, uh, I think, sums it up uh, pretty well this morning, in my view. Uh, it's not calling you Josh Frydenberg, it's calling you Dosh Frydenberg. You're throwing a lot of money around to win votes, aren't you? Well, a couple of points there. Firstly, we're banking the dividend of a stronger economy with the bottom line improving by more than $100 billion. So we've actually seen revenue upgrades off the back of having more people in work and fewer people on welfare, and we've put that to the bottom line. So we see our deficits actually more than half over the forward estimates. At the same time, we are providing cost of living relief now for Australian families. And that's really important because it's the number one topic of discussion around the kitchen tables around our country is cost of living and the higher fuel prices, the higher food prices. So we've made some temporary, some targeted, some responsible uh, decisions and put in place measures uh, to deliver that cost of living relief, including $420 through our tax system to more than 10 million Australians, a $250 payment to millions of pensioners, to veterans, to carers and others on income support. We're making medicines more affordable and accessible for more than 2 million million Australians and of course we're cu cutting in half the fuel excise just as New Zealand and Ireland, France, Germany and other countries have done. OK, uh, it is very temporary for instance when it comes to this $250 one-off payment to, to pensioners and other welfare mm. recipients concession card holders. Uh, it falls in April which we right smack bang in the middle of the election campaign. What happens in May? What happens in June? What happens in July? Cost of living pressures won't ease. So as you know, the pension is indexed uh, twice a year and most recently in March, the indexation for the pension was lifted by the equivalent of more than $20 a fortnight. So that we'll see over a six month period, a pensioner get an additional $260. On top of that, we've made this $250 payment. Mm. Uh, and but I'm of talking course, about if you're really serious about easing, cost and excuse relief. the interruption, uh, easing cost of living pressures, why does it stop in April, this one-off payment, which again is in the middle of the election campaign. Well again what Treasury have forecast is that you'll see a higher inflation rate this year but then it actually will start to moderate so it goes from four and a quarter percent down to three percent and then falls after that uh, and that will help um, alleviate some of the pressures that Australian households are under but the main driver of higher inflation right now is actually international factors and particularly an oil price which has increased by more than 50 percent uh, a barrel since the start of the year off the back of events in Ukraine. Uh, and this is what Australians need relief at the Bowser right now and that's what we are delivering. Uh, inflation will stay fairly elevated. It's 3% forecast for next financial year. We, we saw the full extent mm. of the real problem Australians are facing in the budget papers this year. Real wages down 1.5%. They'll only increase, according to these forecasts, by 0.25% next mm. financial year. That's, that's not a great sell for hard-pressed Australian workers, is it? Well, you're right that you will see inflation uh, at an elevated level and this year, but that's why we're providing other economic support, like through our tax system with this low- and middle-income tax offset, which we've boosted by $420, which actually will mean that if you are on 60, 70, 80 or $90,000, you will see $1,500 in your pocket from the 1st of July when you put in your tax return. If you're a two-income family with those levels of income, you will be $3,000 better off. So actually providing uh, relief uh, and more money to the pockets of Australian families through the tax system with existing measures. Uh, a bit of action behind you. The Prime Minister has walked out doing another network. <laughs> he, he joins us a bit later on. So uh, I turn to the Prime Minister and this unleash, uh, this devastating spray unleashed by Conchetta Ferravanti Wells, a Liberal Senator, long term Liberal Senator last night in the Senate under parliamentary privilege. She accused the Prime Minister, who's standing not too far away from you, uh, of being a bully, an autocrat. She said he uh, lacks a moral compass and is not fit to be Prime Minister. What do you make of that? Well, firstly, the Liberal Party had its uh, Senate pre-selection on the weekend and I understand some 500 uh, delegates from the party uh, reached their decision and that decision um, is, uh, is, is respected. Uh, and the second point I would make is that the Prime Minister has been a fantastic partner for me uh, in helping to steer the economy through the greatest shock since the Great Depression. Um, the numbers that we saw in the budget last night show that growth is higher, unemployment is lower, wages 
are strengthening. And these aren't just numbers on a page, they're actually real people's lives. And to know that we've avoided the experience in the 1980s and the 1990s recessions when the unemployment rate remained elevated for some, for some eight to ten years, and to have avoided that, and this time round, we're having an economic recovery which is actually leading the world faster and stronger than the United States, the United Kingdom, Canada, Japan, Italy, France and Germany is a real credit to 26 million Australians, but also shows that our economic plan is working. But this is the view, I, I go back to uh, Conchetta Ferravanti-Wells, uh, of a, of a long-term, a, a loyal Liberal Party soldier. Again, she's accused the man standing not too far away from you in the Prime Minister's courtyard this morning of being unfit for his office. Well, it won't surprise you, I have a very different view and the Liberal Party has its own internal processes for pre-selections. So, you think, so um, you're saying it's a case of... She's, on the weekend. she's been dumped to an unwinnable position. You're saying it's simply a case of sour grapes with Conchetta ferravanti Wells? Look, I'm just... I, well, I'm just saying I obviously uh, strongly disagree with those comments, but I can only tell you about my own experience as being the Treasurer and the Deputy Leader of the party, that the Prime Minister and I have an out outstanding close working relationship. It's one that has helped deliver um, such a strong economic outcome for our country. There's still a lot of work to do. Um, there has been setbacks along the way. Australia has faced a once-in-a-century pandemic. But as you know, Michael, uh, um, the story now is one of the highest vaccination rates in the world, one of the lowest mortality rates in the world, and now one of the strongest economic recoveries in the world. And it's one thing to talk about our record, but it's also important to talk about our plans for the future. That's what I laid out last okay. night. Further investments in our region, further investments in infrastructure, that's what will create a stronger economy. Out of time, Treasurer Josh Frydenberg, thanks for your time this morning. Always a pleasure.